Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's cosplay time. As always, I am Chris, aka Mr. Zoom underscore 2028. I'm uh, I'm Matt, or known as Too Tall underscore 76. And today we are here with Woo Can He Cosplays on TikTok. <laughs> All right, and a first question. What made you decide to get on TikTok? Oh, that's a good one. I think, honestly, it was seeing... I joined back in, like, 2018, 2019, so, like, right when it first started, like, kind of gaining popularity. Because I was on Musical.ly when I was younger, but I left. But I think I saw YouTube compilations of TikTok, and I was like, actually, this looks kind of, like, fun. Especially because I saw, like, cosplay compilations, and I was like, oh, I, like, really want to get into this and get into that, like, sort of, like, making videos in cosplay. So that's, like, how I got in. Yeah, that's pr pretty much the same story for me, too. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. had a friend that was really into cosplay, and so he got me on TikTok mainly. I was kind of recruited. <laughs> you were forced. You were voluntold. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I just did it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't make videos anymore. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is, you kind of took the question away from me, but uh, I'm going to ask this because I don't think it's ever been all, on ass on any of the other uh, interviews. How are you? Oh, that's really deep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, college just started back up for me which has been like pretty stressful but all my classes are good also my girlfriend had to like take a break from college so it's been like really hard without her here but i'm still like getting to get closer to a lot of my other friends so like all in all i'm good it's just been like a rough start to the semester but i'm like getting better each day what about y'all how are y'all <laughs> oh you know just surviving i've had yeah, i've had i this... get that I've had a bad fever for the entire week. I'm just trying to get over it right now. Ooh, I hope you feel better soon. That's really tough. Hopefully. Make sure to drink lots of water. And uh, to, to piggy also piggyback on Tutel's question, have you drinking water today? No. <laughs> Wait, no, I did. I did. I did. I just had lunch, and I had water with my lunch. Very good. Mm -hmm. My friend, chug the bottle. <laughs> Anyways. That, that Alright, got to see my next question on the list. Pull out the grandpa glasses. No. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, uh, what is your favorite character to cosplay as? Oh, that's a really good question. I'm like looking towards my closet. I was going to cosplay the one slur for this, but I couldn't find his undershirt. So I, I like I was like tearing apart my room looking for it. But I also because I'm going to the set right after this, I want to show up with like crazy makeup on and then be like, <laughs> like what's happening here? Uh, but I was gonna like try and throw it on. But I think probably the one slur is my favorite, just because I think it's the cosplay that I've done consistently the longest. Like most of my like old cosplays. I haven't put on in years um so it's just kind of like nostalgic for me also like it's a big part of my platform too so it's just like fun being in it i kind of like need to revamp them a little bit because the gloves are like i because the first of all the glass is broke and the gloves are like fraying so i just need i need to like update him but i think he's like the most fun especially like video wise to make because he's so like expressive that i really get to like have fun with it uh which one is the uh the, the green one the one side. <laughs> All right, because I think that that's the one that I found your profile through. Yeah, yeah, that's usually how people find me. I have it right here. This one. Yep. Yeah. I actually, funnily enough, back in like 2019, I think, when I was first on the app, I would just make small TikToks. But uh, people kept telling me to cosplay the one side because they were like, you look like him. And, like, they were right. Like, I still do. Um, but, like, especially when I was younger, because, my, like, my eyes were bigger and my nose was bigger. So I really looked... And people kept telling me and telling me, and I was like, you know what? Like, fine. I'll do it. And it's so funny how far it's taken me now. Just, like, a few comments back in, like, 2019. And, like, that's usually how people find me and recognize me. Like, I go to a lot of conventions, 
And sometimes someone will like come up to me to like compliment my cosplay. It's not the one slur. It's a completely different character. But people will be like, do I know you? And I'm like, maybe. And they're like, you cosplay the one slur? And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, I had someone approach me in my school cafeteria asking me if I did. And that was crazy because I was just sitting with my friends that didn't know I cosplayed. And they were like, wait, what? <laughs> so I don't know. It's cool how like big of a piece of my life it's become. And to the one slur. <laughs> Bringing it up to non-cosplay friends, that was secret information you weren't supposed to share it with yeah, the class. Exactly. I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah, I just got, like, outed as the one slur cosplayer. <laughs> um, it was so funny because one of my friends that I was sitting with, like, it was people I didn't know very well yet, like, that are now, like, my really close dear friends, which makes it funnier, but they were, like, strangers to me at that point. Um, one of them turned to me and was like, wait, I know you! Like, I've seen <laughs> you on TikTok! And I was like, ah! <laughs> Oh, you know, it's just funny how like it's been everywhere. Yeah, I think I've had that type of situation like at uh, Los Angeles conventions because I used to live in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, how was that? Because I'm going into film, I'm thinking about moving there, but I'm kind of scared. Oh, uh, everything is good except for traffic. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I experienced that firsthand when I was in there over there in September. Hate LA traffic. Like I never left Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I mean, like San Antonio and Bernie traffic is it's it's better because people are more patient. Yeah, I believe it. And there's there's no like roles you're beating them out for. They think you're going for the same part or whatever on the road. Don't go mm -hmm. in the Houston traffic. You'll see me out there. My oh, my yeah. friend, I I'm not gonna drive to Houston. I'll fly if if I go. <laughs> it'll co it'll cost more, but I'll get there in one piece. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I risked the drive to see your see you three hours. Brother, I don't like driving at all. <laughs> I know you don't. That's why I do it. Yeah, and you have a more comfortable truck. I guess. You're, you have anyway. better seats. They don't hurt my back. I guess. Anyway. <laughs> get it, I guess. Uh, what? Is your favorite con to go to? Ooh. I just went to Holiday Matsuri, and that one was really, really fun. Um, I think that's one of my favorites. But I also went to MomoCon over the summer, and that's also, like, one of my favorites. Uh, but Holiday Matsuri, I've only been once, and they're moving it, so I don't think it'll be the same next year. So I'll go with Momo, just because I know it's going to be, like, the same every year. I also really like Middle Tennessee Anime Con, just because that's the one I, like, grew up going to because um, I'm from Tennessee. Uh, and that one just, like, has a near and dear place in my heart. But I also haven't been in, like, three or four years because it, like, shut down for COVID and I just haven't been since. But I'm going this year. So I'll give an update on how good it is still. But, like, that was, like, the coolest thing ever when I was younger because it was, like, the biggest con I'd ever been to. So I was like, whoa, like, this is crazy. There's so many people. And everybody in, like, Southern cons are really nice. I also just went to Fan Expo in New Orleans. Um everyone there was, like, the sweetest person I've ever met. Not that anyone's ever been mean to me at a con, but, like, they were just so genuinely nice. It, like, was really cool having that, like, deeper connection, because I feel like at a lot of, like, anime conventions, at least, it's a popularity contest to a degree, which I don't like, but, like, at, like, more general conventions, like, fan expos or something like that, like, people are just, like, genuine, and I just love that. It's always amazing when you go to your first, like, convention center convention when you've only been to, like, hotel lobby conventions. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, a whole new world. Like, Hallmat was huge, and I was so, like, amazed by it. Fan Expo was really big, too. I walked into the dealer's hall, and I was like, holy shit, this is ginormous. Like, it's, like I was trying to, like, send pictures to my friends to show how big it was, and I was like, I can't even, like get it all in one photo to show you how big it is and there's just so many people um and it's really funny i just like love conventions because like someone dressed up as ghosts will come up to you and be like oh my god i love you guys so much like i love just like having that experience and it's funny because like people come up to me and i was like oh i was gonna come up to you to compliment yours so it's just like fun having that exchange of like who shares what interests um because i'm always surprised by who comes up to me i'm like i wouldn't expect you to like like this anime, but it's like makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, when I, like whenever you see get to your first like dealers hall in the convention, like convention center cons, it's like my wallet is crying. 
Oh my god. I can, I don't know if you can see it's I don't know how to make it not blur out the posters, but I have like a you can kind of see them through my hands. I oh, love it's, posters. It's in back settings. There. Okay, let's see if I can I I think it's on, oh, on the like go. yeah, it's the little yeah, there it is, yeah. Uh you can see almost all of these are from conventions. Um I have like a whole poster wall. And I got a lot like these right here I just got from fan expo and i really love them and then the batman poster i have right there i got from the like film department at my school someone <laughs> just had it laying around and i was like that's mine now i'm taking that um yeah. but, like, it's just so cool like meeting the vendors who, like at fan expo specifically i talked with a lot of the artists which i don't like super usually do because i kind of feel bad because i'm like you're trying to like sell stuff and i'm like chatting you up um but i got to like meet some really cool people and learn about like more conventions that i want to check out so, yeah. and I think Fan Expo is like travels. I think it goes all across the country. So I can't like super advocate for the rest of them, but I think it's like a pretty cool con from the one I've been to. I don't walk home with anything from cons. I don't buy anything at cons at all. You are so strong. <laughs> You're stronger <laughs> than me. Oh, I also I just got this from a convention. It's from Bee and Puppy Cat, and I caved and bought it. And it was, <laughs> it was expensive, but like. As you can see, I'm holding it right now, so it was like a worthy buy. Yeah. Yeah, I have no self control at cons, so I have to be careful. And yeah, it's like usually I'll set like a, a $500 limit. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I'll cap myself. Like I'll literally just give myself a specific amount of cash and be like, no more, <laughs> no more than this. Uh, and also with voice actors and stuff there too. That's like, and like the thing is, like, vo like going to see a voice actor and getting something signed is expensive, but it makes sense. It's like you know you want to support them, but it's still like if you want to meet more than one voice actor, it's really expensive. They also yeah. Fan Expo had Elijah Wood, which was crazy. I like really should have gone and met him, but it was like at least a hundred dollars, and I was like, I don't know if I can just like drop that. Yeah, Tutal and I uh, did that at our last con to meet uh, Emily Swallow and. Uh, what's his face? Oh, Weathers. I just said it for you. Yeah, Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. Chris, Carl Weathers. Oh, nice. Get it, get it out there. Yeah, the, 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 fir the first time you said it, it, like, your audio, like, censored it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. How was it meeting them? Oh, uh, really good. I was in my, uh, Mandalorian armor, and, like, he grabbed, like, the tip of my chest plate. He was like, oh, that's really well made. That's awesome. <laughs> he touched you. He said I looked like I was from the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I wasn't wearing my Mandalorian that day, so. That's really funny. I would have the mask to show what he was talking about, but I don't have them here. Like, they're not here. They're in another state right now. Yeah, a lot of my stuff is, like, back home, my cosplay stuff, and I'm always like, damn it, like, I can't just, like, pull it out like I usually can. I have to, like, really think about what I pack for college, because, like, once again, I'm, like, I'm not going to be home for so long that if I don't bring it out, like, I don't think I brought my white shirt for my monster costume back, and I'm like, I, that was for so many cosplays, like, I need to get another one, I'm so, like, screwed without it. <sighs> or if I forget a wig, I also couldn't find the one so wig, and I was like, uh-oh, but I know it's here somewhere. I pulled out my Octagaba wig, which has the little, like, white tips on it, and I was like, this is not the wig I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different guy. This fits different than how it used to be before. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because I, I saw a black wig, and I was like, oh, that's got to be the one, sir. And I was like, ooh, that is like a little mullet deal happening. That's <laughs> not him. <laughs> yeah, it's also the nightmare when your uh, cosplay has gloves, and you only find one at first. Yes, oh my god. The gloves, and I, I always have to be careful where I put the gloves, because if I don't put it with the, I don't know where they are. Like, my one star gloves are always in the pockets, because if I don't put it there, they're gone. Same with the tie. They have to be jammed in one of those pockets. Um, it's also missing a button. Like, this is, this is a scene some days. <laughs> I really need to, like, but it's a really nice cosplay coat. The other versions you can get on eBay are really cheap quality, so I don't know who I got this from or how, because people ask me all the time and I'm like, I got that from eBay in 2019. Like that user has probably deleted their account by now. I think like a one star fan died and donated this. <laughs> like, I don't know <laughs> how to get it. 
No, that was new. I forgot which cosplay that was, but like it was like a mask that I bought off of eBay, and it doesn't sell anymore. Like oh, it's just yeah. it's it's gone. It's like it doesn't it does not exist anymore. It's so weird having stuff like that and being like, this is like a lost relic. Like I don't like I don't even know where it's from. I'm not. It's like because when people ask, I'm like, I wish I could tell you. I'm not trying to gatekeep the one store from anyone, but genuinely. I don't know how to find it. Also, like, my mom got it for me because I was, like, probably 15. So, like, it wasn't even, like, me on my little eBay account. I was like, Mom, can you please get this? <laughs> so, it's lost to time. All right, I think that, that was me with most of my, like, Naruto cosplays I did back in the day. Because that was mm-hmm. also back in the day when, like, cosplay wasn't mainstream and you kind of just sent money to a site and, like, hoped something showed up. <laughs> just, like, hoped and prayed. You know, cosplay is so much more accessible now. It's crazy. Just, like, even two years ago, it was really hard to find. Like, you basically, if you wanted to cosplay certain characters, you had to make it, which is yep. just insane. Um, you have to get lucky with And it. now, like, now you can, like, and you could definitely commission back then, too, but it's just, like, there's so much more. Just, like, even, like, Naruto, you can go on Amazon and buy stuff that'll come in in two days. It's insane. I got really lucky. So, I have a custom jacket for a specific cosplay that's sitting in my closet right now. I want to pull it out, but I don't want to do pajama pants on camera. Anyway. I got pajama pants on, too. <laughs> I got really lucky. Me, too. And all I have to do is alter it and finish it, and I'm done. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's really nice getting stuff, like, secondhand from friends, too, when they want to get rid of a cosplay, because usually they make it a little cheaper, too, which is nice. Um, I also... Depop is really good for secondhand cosplays. I have gotten, wait, hold on. I just got, or I'm not going to get up, but I just got this like really pretty like silk cosplay from Tokyo Avengers that I got secondhand from Depop. And I was like, this is so nice. And I got it with the wig. I was like, oh, like, hallelujah. And it came in just in time for Hallmat, which I worry, I was worried it wasn't going to, but it came in the day before. And I was like, we oh, praise the heavens. <laughs> um, so. If you're ever looking for, like, a secondhand site, Depop's really good. I've heard r- good things about Mercari, uh, but sometimes you just have to hunt a little bit. And you can get it cheaper, because, like, once again, people aren't reselling things for more than what they cost. They're selling it, like, for the cost or lower, because they're just trying to get rid of it. So it's, like, it's almost like a cool exchange where it's, like, this is something you used to love that you don't love anymore, but now you're, like, passing it on to someone else. Like, it's, like, I don't know, like, cool sharing that. And also, I, like, get a lot of manga with the same intent in mind, where, like, I'm going to read this and love this, and then I can one day, like, sell it to someone else or give it to someone else that will, like, also enjoy it more than me. Um, I think that's, like, a cool trading culture. Yeah. Yeah, and also the uh, the innovation of 3D printers has helped the cosplay community a lot. It has. It's crazy. Oh, do you have one behind you? Oh, that's sick. And my two are over there. I um, played around with Tinkercad for one of my classes for a bit, but I really need to get into, um, what's the other, like, 3D program? I was playing around with another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to, like, get more into it because I'm, like, I could make really cool props with it. And we have, like, printers at my school that I can use, so I'm like, I just want to kind of, like, use (laughs) those and, like, call it a day. (laughs) They also have, like, bouncier material. Like, someone printed out, like, an Among Us, like, literally this big out of this, like, squishy material. Um, Like, I want to do something like that. Uh, Whose turn is it for a question? I I think I'll, I'll, I'll do one and then... And then too tall, you do one, then we'll be back on, on track. Uh, what is your favorite slash least favorite thing about cosplay? Okay. I think my my favorite and least favorite are the same thing. And I would say the people you meet. Um, because I think I've met some, like, really awesome, really, like, dear friends through cosplay. And I've also met some very interesting characters that i can't (laughs) say i love so like i think it's just like a mix uh because like i don't know i just like really love interacting with people and that space and like sharing an interest especially when it's like a shared media you like because like if you like certain medias you're connecting to it in a certain way so like people that like the same medias as you you're probably kind of similar to 
and it's even fun meeting people different than you. I enjoy that aspect too. Like I really like like you guys' content, for example. Like I feel like it's a very different like genre of cosplay than mine, but it's still like something we can like mutually appreciate, which I think is super cool. Um but I've also met some really <laughs> terrible people. Uh <laughs> and just like really toxic people too. A lot of people in the community are very competitive. Uh once again, like I talked about kind of like popularity contest thing, which I really dislike. Um so it's just cool, like, meeting people and all stuff that, like, I took a big break from the cosplay community for a while, a few years ago, just because, like, people are mean and people are really weird about stuff like that. So that once you, like, learn how to navigate it, it's fine. Yeah, like, sometimes you got to find your, like, your own little niche. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and figure out, like, who you like and who you want to spend your time with. I guess that's just kind of like a life lesson in general, like learn to be like, I'm probably not going to get along with this person. So I should just like leave it be. I don't need to like beat a dead horse. Like that's been really big for me. Uh, Yeah. You get tired of looking at Chris sometimes. (laughs) Bro, you you rarely see my face because I always got the mask on. I know. (laughs) I usually like him. Uh, I don't have a, I don't have stuff on my phone, so I'm just pulling stuff on my brain. Uh, what is your favorite food? My favorite what? Food. Food? This is a really hard question. Can I say generally soup? I like soups a lot. I, I like a lot of genres of soup, but I just like <laughs> the food group <laughs> as a whole. I, my favorite soup is probably chicken noodle, which is kind of basic, but I, I'm just a big soup fan. I think it's underrated, honestly. I don't think enough people eat soup because it's like an easy like delivery method also. I don't know. And if you're cold or if you have a cold, it's just like no food can beat it. There's nothing better than when like your sinuses are feeling all icky and then you drink soup and it just clears it out. Like A good old bowl of ramen is good <laughs> soup. I would also agree. I love a good bowl of ramen. Um, oh, now I really want ramen or miso soup. I love miso soup as well. I didn't know that those uh those like ramen packets, like the one that's just like a brick of ramen, is actually meant as like a starter kit. And you're supposed to add your own ingredients to it. Yes, that's what it's actually supposed. I to be. only discovered that recently too. Yeah. <laughs> so so a it's bunch good of good on its own. Or those yeah. uh. They're saying like the the cup ramen stuff. It's like we're making we're now making it microwavable. And it's like, um, was it not before? <laughs> Why? What was wrong with the other ones? <laughs> the conspiracy of you're not supposed to microwave the cup. I still do it anyways. Nothing happened. It's, yeah, it didn't, it's like it, if it doesn't explode. It didn't say on the label that I can't microwave it. Okay. All right. Need your glasses. Uh, f- probably grab them for the next one. Uh, you need your glasses. Uh, what cosplay would you want to do in the future if money was not an issue? Ooh. The first thing I don't know if this would be my final answer, but the actually I think this would be my final answer. The Xenomorph from Alien. I think mm. it'd be so sick. Like, I would love, like, a big, like, suit. Like, I would love, like, a big cosplay like that. Like, I usually don't do really complicated cosplays. Especially because, like, the more I have going on at a con, the the harder it is to navigate. And I get a little miserable. Like, I had an umbrella with, like, jellyfish tentacles hanging down um, at one con. I was, like, fighting for my life. Because I had, like, hair over one eye, so I couldn't see. And I was getting a headache. And I had two different contacts in, too. So I was just like, ugh. Um, But, like, Xenomorph absolutely all the way i think it'd be so fun to have those long fingers and the big head and stalk around um i also just like really love aliens so i think that would be like so fun one of my friends has i think he said it was a kit he's had it for over 10 years already uh let me see if it shows up on camera i don't know if you can see it but oh Hold that's up. so cool oh that's Holy good shit that's amazing. Uh, oh, another one. I also would love to do like a DC cosplay, like Nightwing or something. Um, 
but I just feel like those superhero suits are so hard to do. Like, I would probably have to make it if I didn't want it to be crazy expensive, because I'd also want it to, like, fit well. I feel like it's hard to buy it, like, a superhero suit, because they're all, like, skin tight and, like, very built for, like, the yeah. physique, so that would also be another one. Just, like, some really cool, like, superhero, like, Nightwing, The Flash, something like that. A classic. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did get you mean about, like, having, like, something, like, big on your cosplay and getting overwhelmed at the con. Because uh, back when, I think Attack on Titan Season 1, I did Levi with, like, a full set of, like, the 3D maneuvering oh, gear. Oh, that... Yeah. At a Los Angeles convention. Which was a lot of people. Mm. It's also really hard to navigate, like, convention halls when you have big stuff like that on. Like, you just, like, bump into people, and there's nothing you can do about it, and that's also what stressed me out. I kept hitting people with my umbrella, and I was like, I'm so sorry! Ugh. Especially like, since, like, I actually, like, I actually had so them, cool. I actually had them, like, rigged up to, like, the whole, like, harness gear that they all wear. Mm-hmm. Plus cheating and that's some, so uh, cool. some shoe strings tying it to the belt. <laughs> that's but, smart. Like, I, I do not know how they get that. I guess anime magic, how they get that gear on so fast. It's insane. <laughs> you know, because it's like five million pieces and you have to like buckle and it's like incomprehensible. I feel like they need training just for putting on the <laughs> fucking gear. <laughs> you see, in their universe, their harness is one, is one piece. Yeah. <laughs> they just... Like a Barbie doll. <laughs> Or or keeping their keeping their uh, their skin tight white pants clean. That's also insane. <laughs> just don't wear, you no, know, I was wear pants, but just don't wear those pants. I had to buy. I bought white skinny jeans for that cosplay. You know what? You're so real for that. I'm not gonna lie. Except for with the harness gear, you can you could not go to the bathroom in that harness gear. Like. That's also another thing about big cosplays like that. Like, if you gotta pee, you can't. <laughs> like, you're stuck. Yeah, I know uh, Too Tall and I know that feeling because we both do uh, custom Mandalorian armor. I ain't easy for me. I don't know why it's so hard for you. Because I'm in a bodysuit and I have to actually find the zipper. I'm not. I'm in a two piece. Oh, ain't, ain't, ain't you the lucky beast? Bro, all I have to do is take my gloves off. I'm I'm good to go. That's it. Yeah, you see, I can't take my gloves off because the glove opening is under my gauntlets. Anyways, uh, what is your dream convention to go to? Ooh. I've always wanted to go to Katsukon. And I, I was gonna try and go this year, but it's just, like, during a random weekend that I just, like, don't think I would be able to go to. Um, but that's definitely a con I want to go to, because I have a lot of friends that go there. Um, and it's in, like, the D.C. area. And I have a friend that goes to school in D.C., but they're studying abroad, so I can't stay with them. So I'm hoping to next year go to Katsu. Is Katsu in February? Yes, I believe so. I think I... This was like a long time ago, but I was supposed to go, but I don't, I don't like, talk to that friend anymore that I was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. I'm just chilling. I'm just here chilling in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And there's also the cosplay lesson of uh, wear cosplays that are, are good for the weather in the area the con is in. I, oh my god, I overheat so bad so often, which I would much rather overheat than be cold. Um, yeah. I hate being cold. Um, but like, just like all the cosplays I wore to Hall Mat, like every time I was outside, I was like, I am about to die. <laughs> like, or if I was moving around too much in them, I was like, holy moly, it just like generates heat and traps it in there. Um, yeah. Because like a lot of the cosplays I wear have like a lot of layers and stuff. Oh, 
but I would rather that than be like in shorts and a t-shirt in cold weather. Like I, I wore a Haikyuu cosplay to Fan Expo and I had to wear this jacket with it. So I was like, I'm not about to be cold. You will not catch me in dead cold. So I didn't even look like the character because I had this fucking jacket on. It would be like, who are you? And I was like, oh, like if you like look at my shirt, you'd be able to tell. But I was all bundled up. Yeah, that's on me for wearing uh, the full, like, Jon Snow winter gear in Los Angeles. And right yeah. when the summer is still going. <laughs> oh, that sounds so painful. Or, Especially or just, with wigs. Oh, I, it wasn't a wig for me. I actually grew my hair out, like, all the way down. That's so cool. That's even hotter, then. <laughs> yeah, and plus I have uh, Japanese hair, so it's all, it's all thick. Mm-hmm. Or anytime I wore an armor cosplay in, in California. Mm-hmm. That sounds intense. Just, felt- just hoping, just hoping the hot glue like survives too. I felt fine when I was cold. wearing my Mandalorian at Sac Anime when I was there like two weekends ago. I actually felt warm, but I felt cold at the same time. Oh, see, so <laughs> your cosplay is airflow. Yeah. 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 Okay, I can probably do one more question before I head out. All right, one, one more. Uh, what cosplay plans do you have for the future? Ooh. I need to like revamp my cosplays list because I ha- don't have like a ton planned. I definitely I'm gonna do a DC Comics like cosplay, hopefully this year. I don't know who or what yet, but that's, like, been on my mind. Um, I also want to do more Tokyo Revengers cosplays, because I have, like, a lot of the stuff for it, like, with me. I just need to, like, style the wigs and, like, either get the rest of the cosplay or just, like, put it on. Um, I've just been procrastinating really bad, um, but that that's, like, on my list. Hopefully Kazutora or Mikey, because I have wigs for both of them. Um, and then just kind of bringing back some of my old stuff, hopefully. And, like, putting more, like, sparkle on them or something like that. Too much stuff on my plate. (laughs) I'm working on so many things at once. It's like, I need to just stop and focus one at a time. Sam, I got, like, three. That's how I feel, too. I got, like, three that are in different states of being ready. They're sitting in my closet. One of them is in a box that I still need to finish. All right. Is there any uh, shout outs you want to give? Anything you want to you want to announce on the show? <laughs> Not really. Shout Good out water. to you guys. Thank you for this. This is really fun. Oh, thank thank you for coming on the show. Mm-hmm. All right. And now it is time for the outro. Same as the intro, but slightly different order. All right, everybody. This has been cosplay time. Thank you for watching. As always, I have been Chris, aka Mr. Zoom underscore twenty twenty eight. I've been Matt, aka two tall underscore seventy six. And I'm Kenny, and thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for watching, and good night. <laughs>